I've got everything set up for my initial testing. I made sure that both of the biases were set correctly. They're sitting at around 1.53 and that's fine. They're matched. I have 117 volts coming in that I measured off of the uh, variac. I kept increasing the variac to compensate for the load until I had exactly what I needed. And on one of the channels, I have my oscilloscope connected. Now, none of my equipment is connected to ground. Everything is floating ground. And it's pretty important to remember when dealing with stuff like this. And what I wanted to show you right now is one of the reasons why when you're making tests, you should have um, shorting plugs. Now, you could actually uh, switch to mono and put a, a single shorting plug in. But I just, I just like to, to look at both channels separately to see what's going on from beginning to end. And this is what it looks like. You could see as I turn on the amplifier and I do not have the shorting plugs in, I get these, uh, um, these artifacts. Now, I have to tell you that the uh, oscilloscope is set for 50 millivolts per division. So we're looking at an awfully low amount of uh, um, uh, noise being generated. But when I put the shorting plugs in, as I'm going to do now, And, and it is difficult to get these plugs into the unit, so just bear with me. You could see that at 50 millivolts per division, there is no artifacts coming out of the output. This is a baseline test that I like to do on amplifiers and radios to make sure that when the output is clamped, as you see here, or even switching to mono, which will make no difference in this scenario, that I don't have anything being injected into the audio circuit after the input. If I were having an issue with like a preamplifier and I was hearing hum coming out of an amplifier, naturally the first thing I do is get rid of the preamplifier. But if you're going to have the input signals floating, they could act like an antenna and pick up stuff. That's why you should always have a pair of shorting plugs like this in your disposal. So now that we know that everything is good when there's no signal going through it whatsoever, we can start working on the injection of signal into the input. We have to consider based on our output and what the amplifier does with the known values, how much or how large of a signal we're going to be putting in to what we're expecting to be putting out. And for that, we're going to need to do some math. Obviously, it's worth mentioning because we're, you know, doing the baseline test this amplifier, uh, you should be testing the signals of both channels. Once again, I'm going to stress that all of my equipment has no uh, reference to earth ground. It's all floating ground. And if you're going to deal with oscilloscopes, and tube equipment, you better be very wary of what you're doing. I have isolation transformers. There are no ground cables that go to earth ground in any of my equipment here. Here's my oversimplified layman's guide to what we're going to try and do here. You can see right here the left signal coming in. I got a little tiny squiggle right there that goes into the 7199. And without getting lost in the woods right now, we'll just say that two signals 180 degrees out of phase come out. Now, if those signals are equal as they should be, then adding them together should equal zero. With that being said, each individual signal passes through the decoupling capacitors on the board and goes out to the EL34s. Now, the EL34s, obviously, the signals are also going to be equal and out of phase because they are basically this resulting signal with the uh, DC clamped. So these signals are the ones that get amplified and become part of the push-pull circuit. The same exact thing applies for this side. So what we're going to do is inject a signal and we're going to uh, um, set it to mono. So the signal coming in is going to be exactly the same for the left and the right channel. And then we're going to look at the inner portion of those capacitors, compare both of them on the oscilloscope to see if adding them together equals zero, as well as making sure they're not distorted, of course. I have my oscilloscope clamped the coupling capacitors going to the EL34s. I have a 20 kHz waveform going in, and you can see the phase inverted signals shifted exactly 180 degrees. I was trying to work out some problems earlier where as the frequency increased, they were becoming a different size. I realized that I am not impedance matched, and this is a, a 50 ohm, and this is 470, and that I better watch my voltages, which I did. And now I have something a lot more stable. If I change the frequency, which I will attempt to do,
This is 15, 14, 13. You'll notice that there, there is a noise in the amplifier. You can actually hear, and I have to find out where that is. You can actually hear the frequency. This is not a speaker, it's actually the amplifier. I'm going to have to hunt that down and maybe a bad solder connection or something. But this is looking really good to 20K. I'm going to do some further testing and then look at the other side. The other side's looking good as well at 20K, which is what I'm testing on right now. There is a slight difference in the size of the, uh, um, the waveforms, uh, however slight, or I don't have my O-scope matched up all the way. But it's looking pretty good and we're going to continue. In this measurement, ideally, we'll be looking for a flat line, where channel 1 equals 180 degrees out of phase channel 2. Obviously, one channel is slightly larger than the other and leaves this artifact. It's interesting to note, however, that on this side, the 1% match 47K resistor is off by <clears throat> about 1 ohm. I'm sorry. It's off by about 1K, where this one is off by... Five, about uh, 500 ohms. I'm a little slow today. I wonder if that's causing the slight difference in voltage. Both of those resistors come off the outputs of the 7199 right down to its uh, um, the D rail here and the B rail up there. And these are listed as 1% uh, um, within 1% specification resistors. So this may have something to do with that slight fluctuation or that slight difference in, in, in output that you see. And that's fine. I'll probably replace the uh, 47Ks with some precision resistors and see if that clears up later. Right now it's not a, a showstopper. A rudimentary handing on FFT also shows that channel 1 has no harmonics at this frequency that are measurable um, in this current setup. Now this setup doesn't, isn't getting very specific and channel 1 is only showing 10 decibels. But what I can do is go deeper and see at what point we can see if there are any harmonics being uh, being injected into this output. I've got some uh, random music playing from my iPad over here and I have it injected um, into, into these ports. I have it in mono but obviously we're just looking at one channel but uh, I have the, the left and right combined together which is, which is what mono does. It does grab the left and right channels and and combines them into one channel so we're getting the best of both. And we're looking at the output of the 7199 and you can see the signal is uh, out of phase with each other. The resulting uh, value of these should be uh, zero. So that's really what we're looking for. You can see in the setting two, uh, 1 over 2 that the resulting value in purple is a flat line. So we have a nice good balance for the push-pull. Here I have the other channel streaming the music from the iPad. And as you can see, uh, the outputs of uh, the 7199 and the resulting value, which is a pretty good flat line. Not exactly perfect, but, but really, really close. Definitely not something bad. That's what we're looking for to, uh, to feed the uh, EL34s to, to push-pull that, that signal for the, uh, for the output. Very nice indeed. Another thing I'm trying to do here, because I can't... Uh, impedance match my uh, <clears throat> my function generator is get a good idea of what a reasonable low but acceptable voltage is on the input and I and I've been working with that and I finally got it down to this this is good for testing it doesn't overdrive anything it may be on the low but that's fine um, I, I got to do a calculation I could find out how many watts being produced on the output by by knowing what the input voltage is but you could see that it's two volts for division now we're basically seeing about four volts, you know, four or five volts coming into it off the uh, off the uh, feed from the oscilloscope right here. This is this is the reference at that point. This isn't necessarily the reference for the input or the rest of the circuit, but just as as a good reference point for the uh, coupling capacitors before it goes to the EL34. This is what I'm using, about four or five volts.